Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Certainly had yourselves a fabulous day and I hope you guys have been having a great week out there so far as we're cruising right on through it. We just got done with our last storm system over the weekend into yesterday and now we have another one to discuss. This one is not going to be comparable to the last one, but one thing that it will bring that the last storm brought is impacts uh, to areas of the country, especially the southeast potentially. So we're going to talk about this storm system, how it's different, talk about the impacts it could potentially bring, because this won't be a tough one to figure out, especially for the southeast and even on up the eastern seaboard into the mid-Atlantic and potentially into the northeast. But we're really going to talk a lot on the southeast with this system because this storm system could really get very strong across areas of the southeast right here at the beginning of the video we're going to talk about kind of what's right in front of us which is into tomorrow and then into thursday and friday which there could be a pretty lengthy winter weather event for areas of new mexico colorado this could actually meander a little bit east into the panhandle of texas oklahoma so we'll give you some details on this winter storm and then we'll get very detailed on what could happen for the southeast into this weekend it's going to be another weekend storm system um, and this one can be a doozy, guys, so we're going to figure it out. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if you folks got anything that I can pray about or pray over, you guys know the deal by now. Please put those prayer requests in the comments so I can pray over and so others can do so too. Let's get rocking and rolling this evening. And uh, there's already a line on the screen from when I tried to do this video about 30 minutes ago and it didn't work out. But now you know exactly where I'm going to draw it. And here it is. There's that dip right here. What we're looking at here is the water vapor loop. So this indicates moisture in the atmosphere, but really I'm not going to talk much on that. I'm going to just kind of show you the feature. And it's right here. If you look, there's that dip. And if you look really closely, there's a little bit of a spin over areas of Nevada. That is our cutoff low of energy that's just kind of lost outside the mainstream of things right outside the jet so it's just kind of meandering out here and this is actually uh, kicking up some moisture that's getting driven into areas of new mexico colorado and sort kind of the stage is being set right now for a storm system across this area of the country and this will fall in the form of some heavy wet snow depending on your elevation and just kind of where you're at so let's get this arrow back off your screen. So this will eventually kind of drop down into Texas, areas of the South Central U.S., and uh, eventually get all the way down into the Deep South. At the same time, you can't really see it on your screen right now, but another area of energy will drop down out the north and sort of combine into what's already here, which will be our cutoff low. And as they combine with one another, this is going to kick start um, a pretty strong low pressure potential somewhere, maybe in the Gulf of Mexico, maybe just inland, maybe it'll form in the Gulf of Mexico somewhere and drift over North Florida. Will it will it cut inland? We're just not quite sure yet. But this could be a rather strong storm system because kind of two areas of in, uh, I keep wanting to say interest, two areas of ener energy combined with one another kind of a clipper kind of type of energy. And then this southern stream kind of shortwave trough sort of combine with one another right here over the south. Trying to explain this the best way I can, but I'm going to show you a better example of this here in a second. So just want to show you guys the players on the field right now. Uh, but as far as watches, warnings, we got winter storm warnings over um, areas of New Mexico, areas of Colorado already, even some winter storm watches up for two counties in Texas and one county, the far western county of Oklahoma. They are very confident in this pink that we are going to get winter storm warning criteria snow for this area. We do have some lingering winter weather advisories in these areas, but not going to talk about that right now. That's just standard kind of lake effect snow ongoing, nothing too surprising up here but this could be a doozy of, the, of a winter storm this has been showing up on models for quite some time so let's talk about the h triple r model between now and the next 48 hours and kind of watch the evolution of this so we'll kick start it we'll kick start this for tomorrow morning we already got a little bit of snow kind of falling across the front range of colorado but we keep this going until about midday and look at this heavy snow that begins to fall i don't pretend to know every single town and community in northern new mexico especially this area of the country 
Um, so I'm just going to say kind of areas. So forgive me if you're tuning from out in New Mexico. Let me know if you are because I don't know of many that tunes in from New Mexico. Uh, but northern New Mexico is starting to get a lot of heavy snow. The thing with cutoff lows is they can bring some heavy precipitation. Um, and they kind of bring their own cold air sometimes. And sometimes when it does snow, it can snow very, very heavy. So you keep getting into tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. It's showing snow starting to creep all the way up into northern sections of eastern Colorado. And you got to think, you know, you go back to this, there's no winter weather alerts up here in these counties of eastern Colorado. So it's something to watch. And I think it just goes to how complex this forecast is really going to be. I could see us waking up tomorrow morning and there being a lot more winter weather alerts, whether it's advisories or warnings. But you kind of keep on going into tomorrow evening. We're about, uh, you know, 24 hours from out from right at this moment. So around this time tomorrow, it's showing it's snowing all the way up here, almost to northeast Colorado at this point. Rain trying to switch to snow in the far western counties of uh, Kansas. You got kind of a, a mean rain snow line, tight gradient here in the far western county of uh, Oklahoma. And I think that's why you do have the winter storm watches up. Where is that rain snow line going to set up right in here? But uh, this continues to go. And guys, I'm telling you, where it is snowing, it is going to snow very heavy. And this starts to switch to snow sometime tomorrow night in the middle of the night. Not tonight, tomorrow night in these areas and kind of the far extreme northwest counties of the panhandle of uh, Texas. It continues to snow in northeast areas of New Mexico. It's still snowing in southeast Colorado especially. And then we keep this going, guys, and we start to get into Thursday morning. And, I mean, this is still pumping out moisture, and the reason it's just – Still pumping out this moisture is because you got to think these cutoff lows, like I said, they're cut off from the mainstream of things, which means they just kind of they just kind of drift. So it's not really driven by like a cold front or a massive trough. It doesn't move in and out in one day. It just continues to pump out moisture in this area. So we're waking up Thursday morning, which is, you know, what, 36 hours from now. It, there's still moisture in the same areas. It's still snowing in these areas. And you keep this going. We get about 48 hours out. You're still dealing with it. So we're getting all the way to midday Thursday, right? I mean, it's it's still you're still talking about the same thing that you were talking about 24 hours ago. It's snowing in areas of northern New Mexico. It's snoring, uh, snoring, yeah, it's snoring. It's snowing in uh, the far northwest counties of the Panhandle of Texas. Uh, snowing and uh, it's starting to try to switch to snow in Guyman, Oklahoma. Uh, does it start to creep close to like the Dodge City area? We'll have to see. But, you know, if we flip this and we, I'm going to do this on the fly here. We flip this and look at the NAM. Um, you know, it has, it has the precipitation continuing and eventually flat out switching to snow in Amarillo for a period. And uh, then this kind of starts to, the, the, at least the winter weather side of this begins to kind of dwindle away as we start to get into Friday morning. Then we start to get a, kind of an influx of moisture into western and central Texas and western basically the entire western half of Oklahoma and central Kansas, where we could use the rain for sure. Uh, but this is going to be kind of a long system. And if you go out between now and um, Friday morning, you can see that the National Weather, Service, National Weather Service in this area, they do not agree with one another. There's a kind of a weird cutoff right in here. But, I mean, we know that this area in northeast New Mexico um, could, could get anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of snow. Someone can get a foot and a half, especially if you're higher up in elevation. But, you know, you go up here in Colorado and uh, just going to kind of do this, kind of wing it here. But, you know, Denver up here, Denver's not really going to get much from this, but you never know. But I can tell you the snowfall forecast has increased a little bit for areas deeper into Colorado, further north. A few inches of snow just out here in the eastern plains of Colorado is possible. But you start to get closer to that New Mexico state line. That's when you start to get over a half a foot of snow in these far uh, southern counties right into here. And then we switch it to Oklahoma. Let's see, right into here. And, uh, you know, this is between now and Friday midday. And, I mean, they're calling for an inch, two inches of snow in Amarillo right now. Um, and, I mean, they're calling for anywhere from two to four inches of snow um, here in the far northwest county one or two or three counties here in texas and if you live in i don't know what the name of this county is i'm sure somebody will tell me here in far western oklahoma but if you live in this area 
confidence is beginning to increase that you guys are going to see some accumulating snow from this. And then there's even some snow forecast in southwest Kansas. So we'll fine tune this again when we wake up tomorrow morning and we'll continue to try to figure this one out, this one out for you folks. But I, I can tell you this, this is part of what I'm about to talk about for the southeast. And this is going to be a tough one to figure out. So we're going to start this off. We're going to look at this is starting off um, a Thursday evening. So what you're looking at here is, in a nutshell, pieces of energy on the map. So the more vibrant the colors here in the yellows and oranges and reds, that indicates where your, your main areas of energy is. So if you look at this energy up here, way up here and uh, Western Canada, you got one right here. And then here's your main player right here delivering all this weather, weather, this winter storm for areas of the southern, uh, for the areas of the southern high plains. Uh, you keep this going, and what happens here is this piece, of this cutoff energy, just kind of drifting around. At this point, it's over areas of the southern plains. But look at this one right here. This is like, hey, buddy, I'm going to try to meet up with you right into here, and they do. So this is around Sunday morning. At this point, th the energy that was already there, okay, which is right in here, is right here so we're starting to get into this is saturday morning energy's already here this clipper from the north is starting to catch up from this about to give this a a boost and really juice it up you're already beginning to get probably some sort of southwest flow you're probably already starting to get moisture beginning to try to get pushed up somewhere into here okay it's probably already bubbling up down here and we'll actually we'll look at the surface analyst here in a second as far as what it looks like uh, but we get this back off your screen keep rolling here and you keep this going these kind of combine at this point this is starting to deepen into some sort of low pressure somewhere in this area and it's getting really boosted right here because these two pieces of energy really combine and then there it is this is late this weekend into next monday morning and you have one heck of a system that's basically sandwiched in between uh the two main uh kind of jet streaks to the north and to the south and this thing is still just a, and this and this is kind of the worst case scenario with the low pressure on the GFS. This really becomes a strong kind of tight low pressure right into here, right over areas of the Carolinas or just off the coast of the southeast, and just sort of meanders around because it's lost. It's and here comes another one, and it's going to do the same thing, you know, just kind of lost out here because, uh, you know, at this point. The kind of the polar jet is way up here. There's no trough digging. I'll show you a better example of what I mean here in a second. But what does this big area of energy even mean? All right, let's take a look at the latest GFS. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, if you're a winter weather fan and hoping that I'm about to tell you about a winter storm coming, you know, you guys should know. I've kind of been mentioning it. We're not in a great pattern for winter weather. But this has a chance to bring a lot of rain. So what happens here, all right, here comes this energy to the north. And then this is kind of uh, helping to aid in the development of a low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico. Here it is. All right. This thing is deepening, kind of moves into Florida Saturday evening. Tons of heavy rain into Florida, maybe even thunderstorms, depending on where you are. Wherever this low pressure tracks, it's a big question. You get into Sunday morning, this is bringing tons of rain, heavy, heavy rain into Georgia, South Carolina. Behind this is this upper level low trailing this. Um, and uh, this could be kind of a chilly rain with a little pocket of cold air aloft right here at the 540 uh, line right into here, kind of kind of closed off, which you know that this is a cut off low if this is closed off like this. But, you know, you get into here and one thing you'll notice is a little bit of blue in the mountains of North Carolina, uh, Virginia could be just enough cold air right at the beginning of this system to maybe kind of start off with some heavy, wet snow if you're way up in high, high up in high elevation. Um, but man, this keeps going, and this is a 992 millibar low pressure off the coast of South Carolina. A doozy of a low pressure. Some people are even starting to chatter about this being a subtropical storm, and it could be. It's not going to be a tropical storm. It's going to lack tropical characteristics, but some sort of tro subtropical system. And yeah, I think the Gulf Stream still, you know, decently warm out here. Definitely not comparable to a few months ago, but there's still, you still got the Gulf Stream out here, and this is trying to, going to try to get a boost off that. But you got a 992 millibar low pressure off the coast of the Carolinas, um, and uh, this is just a, a nasty storm, okay? And, and there's very strong winds, and, you know, this doesn't just head on out into the ocean. This just kind of drifts back into South Carolina, just kind of just 
runs around kind of over the Carolinas. Uh, there's enough cold air to try to switch this to snow. Do I think it's going to happen? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but this is a 980 cell, 980 cell and 987 millibar low pressure over South Carolina based off the GFS Monday morning. And that is going to cause a lot of weather if that happens. And then this just kind of heads on off and does some kind of weird stuff. What is about, what about the European? Here comes the European model. Here comes all the energy. Here comes the low pressure. Same thing as the GFS developing down here. Very strong moves right over areas of Florida. Okay. You know, like Tampa Bay, you're going to get a lot of rain from this. You guys need a lot of rain in certain sections of Florida. I think this is going to give you guys a lot of rain if you kind of live in the drought stricken areas in and around kind of the Tampa Bay uh, region. Um, I think especially kind of just south of Tampa Bay has really got a nasty drought ongoing. But here comes the Euro, um, you know, more so just kind of a coastal low. It throws in a ton of precipitation along, you know, areas of Georgia, you know, obviously Florida, the all of the eastern Carolinas with a wind driven rain. And then this just kind of heads on out. All right. It, it doesn't really stick around and just create a lot of ruckus like the GFS, but it's still a strong system. Um, how much rain could this bring? You know, the GFS is saying um, it's going to, you know, the heavier rain is going to be further inland. For example, I'll be in Gatlinburg this weekend. So, you know, I'm kind of pulling for the GFS not to happen. I'm telling you guys, this would be a monster winter storm if we had just a little bit of cold air injected into this system. And I'm going to talk about why we don't here in a second. But here's, you know, rainfall potential based off the um, based off the uh, GFS. And I'm going to talk about our folks in the Northeast here in a second. I'm not deliberately leaving you guys out, but um, I think that there's even a more of a question mark for the Northeast. But this is rainfall off the GFS, you know, really hits Georgia hard, the Carolinas, especially Florida. Um, and you can see the cutoff energy back here delivering some rain, kind of the upper level low portion of this. And then you look at the Euro. There's a very tight gradient of rain and no rain over areas of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, even Virginia. It really keeps the heaviest stuff in southeast uh, Georgia, all of Florida just about, except the far western panhandle, and then the eastern Carolinas and southeast sections of Virginia. So the worst is really kept uh, kind of, I would say, kind of tucked into the coastline. So GFS, how much winds are we talking about? If something like the GFS, now I'm going to tell you right off the dot, um, GFS overdoes this kind of stuff. But man, look at the GFS. This would cause power outages, beach erosion. Um, it would certainly certainly bring on probably some sort of onshore flow that would cause that uh, beach erosion. Uh, beach erosion, can't say erosion uh, uh, correctly for whatever reason. And uh, it would definitely cause issues. Uh, it could even cause some storm surge for sure. But man, look at these winds it brings into uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. North Carolina, Virginia, it wants to bring 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts in these areas right in here throughout late this weekend into early next week. Um, and I mean, hurricane force winds off the coast of the Carolinas and just the southeast. Now, what about the European? N not quite. Okay, it's not wanting to work for me. Let's see if we can get it going again. Uh, I see what happened. It switched to the 18Z run. Okay, we're good to go now. All right, latest Euro. Keeps the strongest winds off the coastline, but it does bring some pretty gusty winds along southeast Georgia and some gusty winds in Florida, South Carolina, and then gets that northwest flow behind this kick in with some high winds in the mountains. But it's it's not even comparable to the GFS when you compare both of them. GFS is a problem that would cause power outages, um, nasty impacts along the coast, storm surge, beach erosion. It would cause issues for sure. Um, and there's, you know, the potential for a winter weather side to this. Um, but man, it is an outlier right now. But you know, the GFS says, hey, you know, depending on where you live, maybe you get some wet snow, some heavy wet snow. And I could see this happening. As of not right now, you know, I don't buy, what is that, seven inches over this area of the southwest sections of North Carolina mountains. But like I said, I'm going to Gatlinburg this weekend. I would love to this just to pull like a rabbit out of a hat and do something crazy. I mean, I really would. But, you know, you look at the GFS Ensemble, and, you know, there is a little bit of a signal for a little bit of something in the mountains. But, man, um, you know, I, I'll tell you this. If you're in the mountains, I would say that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you live four, five, six thousand feet up. And I know there's not a whole lot of people that live six thousand feet up. 
Um, but you know, if you live in the four to five thousand feet up range, I could see this starting off as uh, maybe mixing with some wet snowflakes. But we got to fine tune that as we move forward. You know, you look at the GFS. I'm sorry, you look at the European with this and uh, what it's showing. And we're gonna have to go back to this again. And uh, he, he, I mean, yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really buy the scenario with any kind of snow. So why why you know is it mid December? And we have a nice coastal low track, and we're not seeing any winter weather. I'll tell you why. So you look at the GFS. Here's that signal right here. There's the GFS. And, um, I mean, and on, on this, basically think of the, the bluer colors and the green colors as a, a strong signal for a low pressure. The warmer colors, the yellows, the, the, the orange, the reds, that's high pressure. You know, the high pressure is associated with more stable conditions above average temperatures. OK, and then the low pressure is basically associated with unsettled weather and cooler temperatures because of the unsettled weather. So if you notice when this low is over areas of the southeast, there's a ridge on top of it. So there's no connection to any kind of northern stream energy to really kind of filter cold air into the system. So. That's why it's just kind of meandering around like a lost puppy. It doesn't know what it wants to do because there's no connection to any kind of northern stream energy. And there never is. This eventually just kind of is just kind of just heads on out into the Atlantic. Sad and lost. <laughs> um, now you look at the European. All right. What's interesting about the European? Why does it keep doing that? I guess it just keeps wanting to try to connect to the latest. Yeah, that's what it keeps wanting to do. Sorry about that. You keep getting distracted. What's interesting about the European, guys, is um, there's the cutoff area of energy right in here. It's going to create all the weather for the Southern High Plains. Here's where it tries to connect with this. But there's like a connection a little bit later. And this area of energy just kind of dissipates but if you notice this little nose of energy on the northern stream tries to nose down into the great lakes region and tries to flirt with our main system down here in the southeast and when they do there is a connection right here you see it you see how these two areas of blue connect so this injects some cold air into this so but 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 it's a little bit too late and it doesn't it isn't able it isn't able to basically pick this energy up right here and kind of slingshot it up the eastern seaboard. Therefore, this does not end up being a big storm really for the northeast. It could, but the ridge immediately builds right back over it, and there goes the little lost puppy way out into the Atlantic Ocean, just kind of just lost out there. It's a cutoff area of energy. So, you know, the euro is a little different. It tries to connect this, but then it gets disconnected. So it's very interesting to watch, and, uh, you know, Here's a great example of this, the GFS Ensemble, on why there's no cold air coming in. You know, our main source of cold air, obviously, is from the north, right? Um, well, you know, you're looking at, you know, Sunday afternoon when this storm is raging on down here, and you notice these are temperature anomalies. You notice you're thinking, well, Mitch, there's below average temperatures in the southeast. You know, why isn't there a chance of winter weather? Well, um, you know, this is only a few degrees below average, and this has driven off cloud cover and rain. But... Our source of cold air to the north is well above average. There's no cold air injection into the system down here. So we're just baking up here where our main source of air, of cold air is supposed to funnel down. So there's just no source of cold air to funnel into the system is what I'm trying to say. Um, but, you know, for my folks in the eastern U.S., I do want to I do want to mention you guys, um, you know, with, with the GFS, what does it do? Well, it throws a big area of moisture up into the northeast as we get into next monday then another round um as we get into midweek and then this just meanders around and we have enough cold air on top it wants to deliver some winter weather but notice we're 198 hours out guys we're like into next wednesday so it, it, it there's been a couple runs in a row where it showed some winter weather for the northeast but I don't think it's a big deal. I think it's way too far out to really talk about. What does the European do? Kind of the same thing. It's kind of another area of low pressure that gets branched off from this one. Just some weird stuff going on, honestly. And uh, this brings a lot of rain late into the weekend to the northeast. Um, it potentially brings a powerful system. You know, I did just mention the Euro doesn't do a whole lot, so I kind of lied. But um, it does bring some weather into the northeast. 
uh, with, a, with a pretty strong low pressure. Back end snow potentially catches up with it. And when, remember when I told you on the Euro, um, the area, the northern stream tries to catch up with this. Therefore, it kind of dumps a little bit of cold air in the system for the northeast, switches some rain into some snow in the interior section of the nor sections of the northeast. And then we have some back end energy kind of kickstarting some northwest flow and some snow over the Great Lakes. And then this heads on out, and then we're done with it. So that's pretty much it. I'll continue to fine tune the updates, but you know, the GFS does show a scenario where, you know, it's concerning. Um, so we need to see if the, the GFS kind of is on an island with how strong it is over land, but not that much on an island. So we'll continue to figure it out. So why is the foreseeable future looking so warm? I'm sure you've heard chatter on it, how we're going to be above average temperature wise for most of the country between now and Christmas. The big reason is because if we keep this going, we're looking at the European Ensemble. You see this low that consistently keeps showing up over here, Alaska, and just kind of areas of the extreme northeast areas, the Pacific, kind of south of Alaska. That area of low pressure, when you have low pressure up here near Alaska, it does not favor cold air to really dump into the U.S. And, and what you notice here is you got this kind of this area of warmer colors right here, this ridging. And then you have this area of low pressure down here kind of affecting areas of the western U.S. So this is basically kind of a funnel in between these two areas of low pressure of warm Pacific air getting thrown down into the U.S. Depending on where the placement of this area of low pressure is, depends on where the main surge or where the main ridge sets up. So you get this back off and you keep this going here. And this low just persistently kind of shows up up here around Alaska. And you keep this going, and here comes another low. All right. And um, at this point, we start to get some energy that does fly after Christmas um, consistently into areas of the Western U.S. We need to watch this. But really between now and Christmas, the main reason we're just going to stay above average and you know we'll start this weekend is just because this main area of red continues to it looks like i'm saying this area in red is is the pacific air and it kind of is but this ridging continues to get forced down into the lower 48 so in a nutshell typically when you have this kind of scenario where low pressures over alaska it does not favor a cold air dump into the lower 48 now sometimes you can still get some cold air but in this case it's it, it's not the case. So trying to explain this for a way where it isn't confusing, but just think of this low pressure, stormy times over Alaska typically does not favor cold air into the U.S. And another way to look at this is the 200 millibar uh, wind streams out here, basically where the jet is. And if you notice, you keep this going, there's the jet showing up that lows right here. And all this energy is just, if you look at the streamlines right here in the arrows, it's just kind of heading down into here. We even got energy heading down into here. So it's just a lot of Pacific air over here that continues just to flood into the lower 48. And you'll hear that, uh, you know, a lot being talked about how just the entire lower 48 continues just to get flooded with Pacific air. And this continues getting into Christmas Eve, getting into Christmas. Now, one thing we're watching as we get closer to Christmas, as this jet really starts to just slam right into the Western U.S., this could create active times right around Christmas time for the western u.s into just after but the, for the foreseeable future until christmas time guys this will continue to be the common theme and um you know looking at this here it is you know we're getting into early next week look at all this warmer air getting thrown into areas of the u.s above average temperatures up here in canada flooding the uh, western and central u.s you know i do think this potential that you can hang on to below average temperatures for areas of the eastern U.S. because of this cutoff low area. But I think eventually warmer than average temperatures will dominate most of the days leading up to Christmas. This is well above average up here in Canada. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of days in the 50s and 60s, even for the middle of the country. And I think the only area that really gets saved from well above average temperatures is probably the southeast. Um, I, I think that the ridge axis will not be anchored it's not going to be kind of a southeast ridge kind of setup where just the southeastern u.s and the eastern u.s of the country really just bakes 
Um, but man, you know, the entire North America, guys, above average as the entire continent of North America gets just flooded with Pacific air. And you don't want anything with Pacific air when you're talking about, you know, wanting some Arctic air. So, guys, I felt like I was a little everywhere trying to explain that. We'll try to tweak that and try to explain a little bit better in the coming days. But to sum everything up that I just talked about with the, the pattern coming up, low pressure around or just south of Alaska, the flow around this low pressure going like this, okay, some kind of consistent low right into here, pushes warm Pacific air, stagnant, ugly Pacific air into the lower 48, creating just a, a pretty substantial ridge over areas of, uh, you know, the entire area of North America. So just the only thing that could happen in this pattern is you get areas of energy down here to the south. Man, that is an ugly circle in L that just kind of flies through this region. And that's kind of exactly what's going to happen over the next several days with our cutoff low. So that's what's going on, guys. Um, that's all I got. We'll have you an update in the morning. God bless all y'all and have a fantastic night.